So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at computing our standard deviation. It looks more complicated than it, than it, really, than it really is. Uh, but what we're doing here is essentially is that we have the square root, is that we have underneath the square root sign, this part right here, we have one element here, which is the ri minus r hat. And this is basically just going to be the, uh, the rate of return in the state. Okay, so this would be that boom, bust, whatever. And this is minus our, the r hat, which we just, we just figured out how to do. Okay? And then the p is that's the probability of event. Okay? And then the more events that we have is that we're going to sum them up, just like we did in the last one. Okay, so it might look a little bit complicated, but it's really, it's really not that big of a deal. Okay? But when we need to compute the standard deviation, the first step that we have to do when we're, when we're looking at these events is the first step is that we have to compute r hat, right? We have to compute what our expected return is. Okay? And then the second thing we're going to do is then we are going to compute our standard deviation, okay, which is given by the lower lowercase sigma, okay. Now, just to, to recall, is that we have a when we have a bell-shaped curve, is that we have basically the high point here. This is our mean value, okay, and and we have basically you should see uh, approximately fifty percent on on the right side, fifty percent on the left side of the mean value. Then we also have a standard deviation, right, which we call with one standard deviation away from the mean. This is saying that we have 68% of our observations occurring in, in that percentage, right, within one standard deviation. This is the same exact thing that we're doing, okay, is that we're computing this and we're doing this by hand. All right, so now we're going to once again look at these two companies, so Dane Creek Distillery and Outlier Education Services. Now, when we have the, uh, we want to compute R hat here. So R hat on Dan Creek Distillery is going to be 14.25, right? And R hat on Outlier Education Services is 14. Okay. Now, when we're going to compute these, we want to compute the standard deviations of each of these happening. Okay. So we'll first do Dan Creek Distillery. And what we're going to have here is that we're going to have a, underneath, our square root, we're going to sum up. Okay? We have three events that are occurring. Okay? We have event one, event two, and event three. This one here is event one, this is event two, and this is event three. Okay? We have our probability right here, PRI. Okay? That probability is still this probability right here that we just used last, last slide. Okay? Under a boom time, right, in event one, we're going to have this multiplied by 0.3, right? because that is the probability of a boom occurring, of event one occurring. Event two, we're looking at a probability here, which is 0.45, okay, which is, you just see this right here. And event three is a recession, which is 0.25, okay? All right, so now we have those probabilities attached. Now we need to figure out what goes inside of the, um, inside of these brackets here, okay? So we have this minus sign in the middle, and then we're looking at r hat. Now, where does our hat come from? Our hat is something we already have, right? We already computed that just on the last slide. Okay, so inside here, we're going to have this 14.25, see, 1.1425, and then we're going to have 0.1425. We see that I write the same thing in each of these three because I'm computing on Dane Creek Distillery. When we compute it on Outlier Education Services, that will then be 14, but we're just computing it on Dane Creek. Okay? Then we're looking at the first part here, ri, right? This is, these values right here are r sub i, okay? These values right here are pr sub i, okay? So we can basically just plug these in. We have all the numbers we need, okay? And so this is going to be 0 0.75, 0 0.15, negative points. And we're going to have a standard deviation here of 49 point eight six percent okay which basically means is that there is a pretty wide dispersion right is that we have an expected return of 14.25 but it could be 49 percent higher or it could be 49 percent lower right so it's actually has a pretty wide dispersion 
Okay, now before we do compute this on outlier education, do we think this is going to be lower or do we think it's going to be higher? Well, by just looking at these numbers, we should really say that it's going to be lower, right? Because they're, they're, it's, it's a much tighter distribution. Okay? So when we say a tighter distribution, we're going to say Dane Creek Distillery is going to have a wider distribution that looks something like this. Okay? Versus if we're looking at outlier education services, it's going to be much tighter, right? It's going to be taller and, and, and tighter, right? There's going to be a lot more action underneath that, that bell curve, right? It's going to be just the observations are going to be just much closer together. Okay? Now, outlier education services, okay? and we're still looking at event one, right? This is still event one over here. This is still event two. And this is still event three. Okay, so we're going to look at our probability of that event occurring, which is still 0 0.3, 0 0.45, and 0.25, right? Which are the values that we had put up there on, on Dane Creek Distillery. We are going to subtract off the 14%. And then our first event is going to be that 0.2, right? Because that is um, event 1. Event 2 is 0.15. And event 3 is 0.05. Okay. And now we're just going to straight up compute this. So then we end up getting a standard deviation here of 5.6%. Okay. 5.61%. Okay, which one of these is tighter? Which one has a lower dispersion? Obviously, the lower dispersion is going to be coming from outlier education services. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do, right? So we look at this and say, oh wow, this level of risk, Dane Creek Distillery has a lot more risk. It's a 49% swing. Okay. We want to basically lock in these things, and in order for me to buy this stock in Dane Creek Distillery, I need to make sure that I'm going to be adequately compensated. Okay, so this doesn't necessarily provide us as much information. Sometimes these numbers can be actually quite close. So there's one way we can do this. It's called the coefficient of variation, okay, which basically is just that risk-return trade-off. Okay? And it's a simple calculation, and one in which that we do it is we're going to look at our CV on Dane Creek Distillery and then our coefficient of variation on outlier education services. Now, the returns, right, we know is the 14.25% on Dane Creek, and then we have 14% on Outlier Education Services. Okay. And then it was 49.86 on Dane Creek for the risk factor, and then it was 5.61% for Outlier Education Services. So on Outlier Education Services, we have a coefficient of variation of 0.4. And then for Dane Creek, we have this at 3.56. Okay. Now, these numbers just in and of themselves don't necessarily tell us uh, which one we should buy. Okay. But when we think about it is that, do we want this value to be higher or lower? Okay. We want this value to be lower, right? because we have a risk-return trade-off. Okay. So if we put this in with a risk over return, okay, and this is one way we can think about it, if I increase the risk, if risk goes up, okay, and we keep return constant, right? So we keep return constant, risk goes up, what is going to happen to the coefficient of variation? The whole thing is going to go up, okay? So when we think about it, is that a lower value, a lower value is good, okay? So just given these numbers, is that which, which stock should we buy? Okay, we should buy outlier education services because there's a much lower coefficient of variation. That 0.25% of return is not enough compensation for me as an investor to buy Dane Creek Distillery. Okay, so I'm better off buying outlier education services because there's not enough compensation for my risk.